Yo, what it do, Chicago? Welcome back to the channel On The Go Chicago Sports, where we talk all things Chicago sports and sports in general. You already know who it is. It's your boy, Mike B. Back with another video, back with another edition of the Quick Hitters, one of my favorite, where we discuss a couple of topics that have been happening throughout the week. Today, we got a, a few topics to go over. So we got some Bears news and some Bulls. Um, for the Bears side of things, we're going to talk about Dakota Dozier being placed on the IR as well as the Bears standard defensive back, Jason Staley. For the Bulls side of things, we're going to go over their summer league schedule that has been released. They've been having a schedule to play a total of four games. And then we're going to cap off with some under-the-radar trade options that the Bulls should look into of guys that I think can really elevate this Bulls team, take them to the next level next season. I know it's been a lot of rumors of Rudy Gobert, John Collins rumors been, you know, creeping in. So I don't, I think the Bulls don't need to make a home run like those. I think it's a lot of guys that can still come, that they can still trade for and come in and be uh, great players and elevate this team. So I'm going to get into all that after this intro. <laughs> All right, so first topic we're going to go over is Chicago Bears related, and that is um, right guard Dakota Dozier going down a few weeks ago with a leg injury. Now is being placed on IR, and then the Bears go and sign defensive back Jason Staley, who was a former teammate of Justin Fields at Georgia, who played receiver, now defensive back, played with, just recently played with the London Falcons, played with the Green Bay Packers, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Seattle Seahawks, a uh, third-year pro, only played in eight games throughout his whole career, 25 years old. So basically, to me, this looks like another um, practice guy or a special team guy, another young guy that can still come in with some potential, another Ryan Post deal of buying low uh, with a high reward of a guy, you know, really being um, – reaching his full potential. Uh, so I'm not like I said I'm not going I'm not mad at any deals Ryan Post do, but this does kind of tell me that this Dakota Dozier um injury is probably not that serious because to come out and sign a DB when you're potentially starting right guard is hurt. Um, kind of tell me that maybe this injury is not that serious, or they believe in what the the guys they got now. Um, so that it can go one or two ways. Cause I, I kind of figure if your potential starting right guard go down, you will probably go out and get you another right guard. But I'm not gonna really kill Ryan Poe because he just it just been announced, so it's still opportunity for them to go out and get that guy. So um, I just want to touch on that news with this with um, Dakota Dozier and Jason Stan Stanley. If anything pop up with Dakota Dozier, I will be giving you guys the breakdown here on on the go chicago next up we got on the list is bulls summer league the schedule has been released the bulls are scheduled to play a total of four games uh the first game is july 8th against the dallas mavericks then july 10th against the new york knicks july 12th is the toronto raptors then they cap it off july 14th with uh, against the charlotte hornets so I've been I've been watching Summer League for a good last five years. I can't before Lonzo Ball made his appearance to Summer League, before that, I haven't really got in tune with that until probably the Derek Rose Summer League. So Lonzo had so much hype coming into the lead that really got me intrigued to really see Lonzo, which got which I became a fan of Lonzo through his college year because he was just larger than life and I, i'm still a fan to this day i'm happy he on my boys i hope he get healthy but yeah I, i'm since for since then i really been intrigued interested into this summer league last year we got a chance to see io play 
kind of struggled, but ended up picking things up in the next level in the NBA. Patrick Williams dominated. Marco looked it good. So I'm really, I'm really interested to see Io coming back for his second season. Um, Marco coming back, seeing how he looked. I hope Tyler Cook get another run because I really love Tyler Cook. I wish he would have got a chance last season when we really needed that backup for. But I hope he's sticking around. Um, whoever we select at this 18th pick and keep, I want to see that guy make some run. And of course, I want to see Leangelo Ball get another crack at this uh, summer league. I like watching him shoot the ball, play. I hope he get a chance at the next level. Uh, I just want to see him play at the NBA level. I'm a huge fan of the, of the Ball family. Uh, especially Lonzo and LaMelo. And I kind of do want to see LiAngelo get his crack in the lead, whether he's success, successful or not. I just want to see him get a chance in the lead. Um, so that's the Bulls' uh, summer league schedule. Uh, last topic at hand, we're going to talk about some under-the-radar trade options for the Chicago Bulls. I got five. So first option is Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes has been linked to the Bulls for a while now. Um, you some people could uh, compare Patrick Williams to him, but I think Patrick Williams got the tools to be even better than Harrison Barnes. But I wouldn't be mad if Patrick Williams turned out to be a Harrison Barnes. Harrison Barnes is a hell of a player. Uh, he he was it, it was until he got to the Kings where he wasn't as talked about. Uh, helped the Warriors get their first champion. Uh, was a good player for that Dallas Mavericks team. Then got to the Kings and kind of was an afterthought. But it's a guy who really gave you 18 and 7, improved his three point shooting, still a hell of a defender, can really uh, attack the basket and do other things than just being a spot up shooter, uh, a champion. It could really come in and help this Bulls team a lot. So, this one guy I really hope the Bulls look into. Uh, I've been saying, I've been yelling uh, Harrison Barnes to the Bulls for the longest, and this is a move that I think the Bulls should look into. It's not really as sexy as Rudy Gobert or John Collins, but damn it, I think he can get the job done. Next option is Seth Curry. Uh, I don't think the Brooklyn Nets would be interested in trading Seth Curry, but it's the NBA, and anything is possible. So Seth Curry is the one thing the Bulls really needed last season. That's shooting at a high level. Yes, granted, some the shooters going to have nights where they struggle, but uh, Seth Curry is more consistent than he is inconsistent, and he's more than just a spot-up shooter. He can put the ball on the floor, attack the basket, underrated playmaker, um, okay defender. He got better, not saying he's uh, a lockdown defender, but he he's okay. So and he's and he really cheap. So if the Nets looking to make a move for Seth Curry, I think the Bulls should look into trying to get a, a trade for Seth Curry. I think he's only making eight million a year. Next up is T.J. Warren. Uh, I remember T.J. Warren uh, was really talked about in the bubble because he came in and was playing like Jordan 2.0. But I think he's still a good player. Um, not not as talked about since, you know, his bubble run, but still a good player. Gave the Indiana Pacers a couple of 20-point season. I think he come in and fit this six-man role well. Um, can back up the three and play the four. Uh, a great shooter, an uh, average defender at that. Maybe he's not going to give us 20 points a game, but maybe he can give us 15 points off the bench. That's cool. Um, can back up Patrick Williams, another veteran guy that knows the game that play a lot of playoff games, not big playoff game, but he played big playoff games that I think can fit right in on this Bulls team. Another guy, probably the one guy that's really a stretch, but I think um, we can make a deal happen. In his last uh, year, his contract making 21 million, and that's Malcolm Brogdon. But Malcolm Brogdon, you, you can bring him in, but I, I really picked him because I don't know the status of, of Lonzo Ball. And I think this is a guy that played a lot of six men in his career, especially with the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, I was mad that they let him go, but they ended up winning the champion. So, you know, it's, it is what it is. But I was kind of mad at first that they let him walk away. Uh, especially it's a guy who can play with Caruso, can play with Ayo, can play with uh, Lonzo, Lonzo. If you wanna, if you still wanna make the deal, if Lonzo is healthy, can play with Zach Levine and just fit right in, and he know if it's time for him to go back to the bench, he's not gonna give a fit or anything because he know his role. And when asked to do 
to start, he's going to start. When X come off the bench, he's going to come off the bench. A great playmaker, a great scorer, can defend the basket, um, and can really give us 18 to 20 points off the bench at a really high level. Been through the tough playoff ga- playoff games and, and, and really know his role. So I think Malcolm Brogdon can be huge, whether or not what, the uh, Pacers will look into return. Maybe could be White, the 18 pick, and uh, Darren Jones Jr., Trey Brown Jr., one of those guys. That's that's okay. I'm willing to get that up for a proven veteran like Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon. Um, last on this list, it's a guy that at first I could not stand, but he grew on me, and I and he get a lot of he get a lot of shit, but he he's really an overall good basketball player. Um, that's Cal Kuzma for the Washington Wizards. Washington Wizards. Yes, his dress dress may be questionable, but damn it, I think he's a good basketball player, and I think he can fit this Bulls team nicely. Uh, he can stretch the floor, can be that power forward. Uh, his game is not just a catch and you know catch and shoot, as you saw at some times with playing with LeBron James. You know he was just standing in the corner, kept waiting for the ball to come to him. We really seen his game explode before LeBron came. And you see a little bit with the Washington Wizards. And I, and I think the Wizards are locked in on Ruchi Hachimori as they start in four. Maybe they want to keep Kyle Kuzma as a sixth man. But if they look into trade Kyle Kuzma, I think the Bulls should look into trying to uh, retrieve Kyle Kuzma for, you know, a small price. I think Kobe White in the 18th pick, I'd be okay with that. Maybe Kobe White and Troy, well, Troy Bad Jr. just came from the Wizards. Or Derek Jones Jr. Some, some one of those guys... You can try to package for Kyle Kuzma. I don't think his value is an uh, all-time high, and I don't think I don't think it's very very low. But I think you, you can you can package something up to try to get Kyle Kuzma on this team. Uh, I I think Kuzma can be a, a really good piece for this Bulls team, especially the the, uh, the chemistry is there with him and Lonzo. So yeah, I think uh, Kuzma can can do good on this Bulls team. So. That's all I got for you guys of the under radar trade options for the boys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I will be down there talking to you guys, or you can tweet me at my Twitter at OTG Shot Sports. Um, yeah, if you ain't subscribed to the channel, what are you doing? Drop that sub, like these videos, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to go to On the Go Chicago Sports. It's your boy, Mike B. It's been great talking to you guys. You guys stay safe, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.